The two entities strikingly differ in clinical presentation and in laboratory tests. An experienced clinician has little if any doubt examining a patient presenting a painful thyroid with fever and elevated CRP or ERS level, that the patient has subacute thyroiditis with all probability. Around 20 to 25 percent of patients lack this pathognomic presentation, the thyroid is only tender, only subbrility is present. In such cases the main differential diagnostic problem is the differentiation between subacute and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. On the other hand, the sonographic presentation of de Corvain's thyroiditis is very close to that of papillary cancer. There are only subtle differences. The most important signs are the cloudy appearance of thyroiditis caused by the ill-defined borders between intralesional structures and the presence of microcalcification in the event of papillary carcinoma. There is no other thyroid disease than the Corvain's thyroiditis in which the knowledge of clinical and laboratory data are so important to the diagnosis. From a practical point of view, radiologists are not always aware about those clinical data which are necessary to diagnose the Corvain's thyroiditis. On the other hand, a thyroidologist is aware about patient history, palpates the thyroid and has the possibility to analyze laboratory tests. Therefore an unequivocal sonographic differentiation is not possible in around 50% of cases while less than 10% of cases may cause serious differential diagnostic problem for an experienced thyroidologist. Left to Corvain's thyroiditis, right papillary carcinoma. Both diseases are presented as a hypocogenic lesion. The borders of the lesions are blurred in both cases. However, in the event of thyroiditis, around 50% of the external borders are blurred while in carcinoma only a small proportion are ill-defined. Thyroiditis has a cloudy appearance because the borders between intralesional structures are also blurred. Papillary carcinoma lacks this sign. And last but not least, as in this case, microcalcification is a frequent finding in papillary cancer while it can be found only occasionally in the Corvain's thyroiditis. The ultrasound presentation of these cases are very similar. There is no significant difference in the extent of blurred borders. The presence of microcalcification is the only and very important difference. Compare the brightness of non-specific hypercogenic granules in thyroiditis with that of microcalcification in carcinoma. Typical presentation of de Corvain's thyroiditis is demonstrated, the whole ventral part of the hypocogenic area is blurred and the borders between the more and the less hypocogenic areas are also well defined within the large hypocogenic lesion. The borders are sharp and uneven in papillary carcinoma. The tumor is found in a basically hypercogenic nodule which contains small well circumscribed hypocogenic areas. The borders of the lesion in thyroiditis are blurred while those in papillary carcinoma are basically sharp and irregular. Ill-defined parts can also be found in carcinoma but the extent of blurred borders strikingly differs in the two entities. Moreover, the tumor presents microcalcifications. The presentation of the diseases are very similar in these cases, nevertheless great part of the borders are sharp in papillary carcinoma. There is no significant difference between the two diseases as regards the blurred borders. Thyroiditis is present in more foci. Note the presence of microcalcification in the tumor. There is no significant difference between the two cases except for the presence of microcalcification. Both diseases involve almost the entire lobe in these cases. A striking difference can be observed in the borders between intralesional hypocogenic and echonormal parts. These are blurred in the case of thyroiditis, while sharp in the tumor. There is one bright hypercogenic granule in the thyroiditis case. The hypocogenic lesion presents basically sharp but irregular borders which is an unusual finding in thyroiditis. There are several minimally hypocogenic areas in the case of thyroiditis. The presence of non-specific small hypercogenic granules has no relevance in the event of an echonormal nodule. The surface of the tumor is lobulated. 
Note the presence of microcalcifications. The entire lobe is affected by thyroiditis and has a cloudy appearance. The papillary carcinoma involves great part of the lobe and is presented in the form of multiple nodules with different echogenicity. The intranodule or hyperechogenic granules do not fit to microcalcification. These are presentation of fibrosis. The pattern of thyroiditis is almost diagnostic itself, hypochogenic area with both extralesional and intralesional ill-defined, blurred borders. On the other hand, the papillary carcinoma presents sharp, lobulated margins. Only small proportion of the border is blurred. Moreover, the tumor contains microcalcifications. Both diseases present blurred borders but not in the same degree. Moreover, thyroiditis displays even intralesional blurred borders which causes a cloudy appearance. Nevertheless, the sonographic pattern of thyroiditis highly mimics that of a papillary carcinoma. The presentation of the two entities are very close to each other. Although the thyroiditis displays more blurred borders than papillary carcinoma, the difference is not enough to a clear distinction. Moreover, one hyperechogenic granule in the case of thyroiditis corresponds to microcalcification while the less bright granules in papillary carcinoma do not. There is another hyperechogenic granule in the thyroiditis case. This is a comet tail artifact. The presentations of thyroiditis and papillary carcinoma are almost identical in these two examples. This had a serious consequence in the thyroiditis case because the patient was told to have carcinoma with great probability. Although the margins of thyroiditis are a bit more blurred than those of the tumor, a clear sonographic differentiation is not possible. There is practically no difference between the sonographic presentation of these cases. And again, the ultrasound appearances are practically the same in these examples. The presence and the absence of microcalcifications are the only difference between the tumor and thyroiditis. Two focuses of thyroiditis are demonstrated in these sections. The borders of these are blurred while the margins of papillary carcinoma are partly blurred, partly sharp and lobulated. Both diseases involve the entire lobe. The papillary carcinoma contains hyperechogenic spots. Considering the dorsal acoustic shadow, these figures are in part coarse calcifications. The focus of thyroiditis presented in the upper image has blurred borders while the other in the lower image presents partly sharp, partly blurred borders. The papillary carcinoma displays sharp lobulated margins and contains microcalcifications. The hypochogenic area has blurred borders in the Corvain's thyroiditis case. It contains small non-specific hyperechogenic granules. Papillary carcinoma has ill-defined borders, too. However this sign can be observed not all along the lesion but only on the ventral surface. Moreover, the malignant nodule contains not only nonspecific granules but one microcalcification, too, which is more bright than the nonspecific hyperechogenic granules in the thyroiditis.